all this morning. How many of you are excited to be in the house of God today? Why don't you stand to your feet? We are going to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today. And I want to encourage you from the Word of God as we get ready to praise. Isaiah 43 says this, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And it says later on in that chapter, it says, I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I have called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves, the waves and they drowned. Their lives snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. You know, today we have not come to serve an idol that's been made by man's hands, that's made of gold or silver. Today we have come to declare the praises of our God, our King, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Creator of the universe. And today He wants you to know that he knows everything about you there's nothing that escapes his attention concerning your life so today you can worship him in freedom and you can worship him in confidence knowing that he is with you and he's never going to leave you or forsake you so this morning as we begin to praise why don't you begin to clap why don't you begin to sing your own praise song to God storm that surrounds me just one word the darkness has to retreat just one touch I feel the presence of heaven just one touch my eyes will open to see my heart can help but believe
There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. It's nothing like your power. Thank you, Jesus. It's nothing like your power, Jesus. Worship you, Lord. worship you in this place today, Jesus. There is no one like you. We exalt your name. Thank you, for you are worthy of all praise. Worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. There is no
stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working
Jesus, we thank you. <clears throat> you are the way maker. We sing that song with great joy because we've seen you make a way where there's been no way. We are your people, bought by your blood, purchased by you, bought not with perishable things such as silver and gold that are used every day. We've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. We are your prized possession. Thank you, Lord. You're the way maker. And you may be here this morning and you need a way to be made in your life could be that you're at a real, real deciding moment. You're at a difficult moment in your life. There seems to be no way forward, no way back. You're in the presence of the way maker this morning. He takes care of everything. There's somebody here this morning, you're feeling like an utter failure. Feeling like a failure. Well, just open up your Bible. It's full of failures. Failures that place their faith in the goodness and the love of God. He came through, did something incredible, and changed their life forever. In fact, look around. The room is full of reclaimed, repurposed, failures who placed their faith in Jesus Christ, who's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's wonderful. It's what he does. Jeremiah put it like this, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy never comes to an end. It's brand new Every morning, great is his faithfulness to me. When we are faithless, you may be faithless this morning. You may feel like a failure. i got great news for you. He reclaims failures. His love is brand new. It's without end. You wake up to it every morning. It's brand new. You're not going to leave this place a failure this morning. You're going to leave this place with your head held high, encouraged by the Word of God. It's going to come into your heart, and from this moment, from this day forward, as you step out of this place, you're going to wake up inside to the life of God within you, and all things are going to become new, I'm telling you. You're not going to look at your life any longer in that way, as a failure. You're going to see yourself as more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. You're going to see yourself as a person who can do all things because of the very supply and the strength and the life of God in you. Amen? Amen. You may be seated for a moment. I tell you something now. This is a very special service this morning. It really is because we have got I believe it's 14 different preachers. <laughs> when you're asked next, next week, listen, when you're asked next week, who preached the sermon on Sunday? You'll, you'll, be, able to, you'll be able to recite 14 different names. We've got 14 preachers this morning on fire with the word of testimony in their hearts. This isn't theory. This isn't formula. This is the very life of God that has changed the lives that we're going to listen to. We've got 13 people going through the waters of baptism. And I tell you, if you've been baptized, it's going to remind you 
this morning, of that moment, that precious moment when Jesus Christ became your Savior, Jesus Christ became your Lord. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reawaken and revive, I believe, us who have already been baptized and born again. Maybe we've grown a little cold. You're going to hear this morning wonderful testimonies from people that have seen God do miracles in their lives. And before we hear those testimonies, before we get into the baptisms and Paul and Hillary introduce us to the candidates, I want to I ask John Davis to come this morning. John has got an incredible testimony. John and, and uh, Sarah Davis are joining us this morning. It's great to see Charlie and Carol and Jake with us this morning as well. I tell you, I was joking with Charlie and Carol. He has cleaned that baptism pool possibly hundreds of times, Charlie. Isn't that right? Great to see them with us this morning. But John and Sarah were part of the church here for 11 years. And um, wonderful couple and faithful couple from, from Barry. And um, over those 11 years, John, you really sowed your life into this, into this house. But I tell you now, just life sometimes hits you with a curveball. It hits you with some surprises along the way. And in 2020, I remember receiving a call from John, and it was, it was a real kind of heavy call. A lot of things happening that I'm going to allow John to, to tell you about. But I tell you now, this man, you know, when, you're, when your faith comes under fire, when, you're, when your faith comes under test, right, it's robust enough to stand in the storm, in the darkness of the night. Your feelings might go all over the place. But I tell you, the, the, the testimony that this man's got of his faith standing in a severe storm is incredible. John, why don't you tell him about that, that time right. when we had a chat okay. on the phone and go through it? Um, right, 2020, I had a conversation with um, a consultant who said, we'll give you three months, maybe six months. Um, because I had had cancer, prostate cancer, that seemed to have been cured, but then all of a sudden they found it was spreading. It was in my bones, it was in my spine, it was in my lungs, it was right across. And he said, the only thing we can give you is medication that might help you for maybe up to two years. And my reply to that was, so I'm on a winner both ways. And he looked at me and said, what do you mean you're on a winner both ways? I said, because if I get healed, I stay with my wife. If I die, I go to be with my Lord, which is the perfect healing. Because let me tell you what Pastor Dave said earlier about failure. Here's a big failure standing in front, bought by the grace of God. Amen. Because I went through the drug scene, everything. I haven't got time to go through there, but my life was a mess. But I found Jesus. And he is so honest. He is so, well, he just, he just fills you so much. You know? Well, Pastor Dave then said to me, do you know, I believe what Satan has brought to harm, God is going to arm. And we just took that word. Then my wife turned around. She said she had this vision of Moses standing before the burning bush. And God said to her, as the bush was not burnt, so cancer will not burn you. It will not consume you. And we stood on that word. We had a couple of other words given to us. You know, that were absolutely amazing. So we just stood on the word of God. And then I had to go for another scan to see how bad everything was. Then I had an email through from the consultant and said, we can't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Here's, here's the real crack, though. We've got it documented. The whole thing is documented. You know, people say sometimes, oh, I've heard about healing, but um, where's the proof? You know, we've got it. You know, amen. God, they try to fight us all the way to stop us getting it, but we got it. Can you put up the one scan? That was me. 9.5 millimeters of cancer, 
those things that I, I said I was machine gunned with the cancer. That was the cancer in my body, 2020, that side. Then you look at the other side, oh dear, the cancer seems to have gone. And they could not, they could not explain it. The amazing thing was, I had to go and see another consultant because they needed to find out um, why this had happened and they were babbling on about scientific. And in the end, I just said, if you look up there, so the consultant looked up, I said, there's a God up there who looks after me. Yeah. So this is what I say. If you are searching today for an answer to your life, there is only one. Jesus. That's our answer. Amen. I tell you what, <laughs> I cannot. Do you, I get so excited about this because, oh, do you know, there's so many people that are suffering out there. There's so many people, even in, in a room like this, that are suffering, going through things. Do you know our God is so great? Let's just trust him. Trust him. Did I have bad days? Yes, of course I did. There are days when I used to stand out in the garden, my wife would tell you and shout at God, what's going on? <laughs> Ten minutes later, I'd be saying, sorry, Lord. <laughs> We're human. We have failings. And that's the beauty of my God. He loves me even though I'm a failure at times. And you know what? He says that to you. You may be a failure. You may have fallen flat on your face many times. But you know, the Lord Jesus is standing there and says, I love you. Amen. There's nothing that can separate you from my love. Just please take that step of faith. And step into the light. And step into that glorious... Well, it's amazing what God done. I don't know if you have the other uh, picture of where the PSA results were. Um, where it, The chart. It's a, graph. it's a graph. Do you have that? Oh, she's, it was on there. No, next one. The graph. That's it. Yeah, amazing how prayer works. My PSA went right up to 150, okay? Then we started praying. Oh, dear. It seemed to have dropped rather rapidly, <laughs> you know? That shows how God can work, all right? We have an amazing God, and I know that if there are people here that are suffering, feeling that they need a touch from God, I am willing at the end of this service to lay hands on you and pray for you. Amen. I really am. And I know Pastor Amen. Davis. This man has been such a man in my journey. Been such an encouragement. Both of them. And I love this guy. I really do. You know. He's fed so much into us. I come back here like today. And I'm thinking, oh, really want to come back? And God says, no, we want you in Barry. <laughs> and it's called obedience. And sometimes I want to be disobedient and come back. <laughs> That's my story. That's my testimony. And all I would say to you is, please, please trust our Lord. Amen. He loves you. I break my heart when I see people going to a lost eternity. Hell is a, is a place. And it's not the place that you see on TV where they say, oh, I'd love to go to hell. You would not. Hell is total and absolute distance from God. Now, you and I know I'm 70 odd years of age, and I can tell you that time has flown past. And I think, eternity? I don't want anyone in this room to end up eternally in damnation. Amen. You have the opportunity today to accept Jesus Christ into your life. And I tell you what, He will turn it around. He is the most faithful person that you will ever come across, He will never fail you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's the first preacher. That's the first preacher. Another 13 to go. Yeah. But why, listen, why don't we stand right now? And um, listen, we're going to open up this front for prayer at the end of the service. And we're going to lay hands. We're going to ask John to pray. Lay hands. And you may want to stand in for somebody. You may know somebody that that is really battling with sickness. 
I tell you now, when, you, when you're sick and the questions start to awaken in your mind about what's going to happen and what the future holds, we get afraid. And God knows that. God knows we get afraid. And that's okay. He wants to take away those fears. He wants to take away those concerns. So maybe you want to step in for somebody at the end of the service. We pray together. And let's believe that the way maker, the way maker will make a way, deliver, heal, set free, and do what only he can do. Nobody could do that. Nobody could do that. You saw John's lungs on the left-hand side. It was like they'd been shot with a machine gun. That's what he said. Cancer all over it. Right side, all that gone. That's, that's his hand. That's God. That's God. That's not the hand of any man. That's, that's God. That's the one who splits the sea. That's his work. That's his territory that only he can operate in, and he's done a miracle. We're going to believe for that at the end of the service. But let's, we're going to lift our voice. We're going to sing. We're going to thank him for his goodness. And then Paul and Hillary are going to come, and we're going to hear the next 13 other preachers that are going to bless you. Let's open our hearts. Listen, Jesus is here by the power of his Holy Spirit, like John said, with his love to help us, to strengthen us. If you're carrying a burden this morning, it's going in Jesus' name. It's not, it's not God's will for you to carry that for one more minute, not even for a moment. So let's lift our hands in great expectation for what God's going to do this morning. God bless you. you. 
Well, good morning, everyone. The, these, uh, these services are so special because we know something wonderful is going to happen, as it already has. We've already heard that. But we've got more things that we can't even comprehend as yet. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to say welcome to all the family and friends of those that have come along to, to watch the... Uh, Baptism disciples this morning. Uh, for some of you, you may never have come into a, a building like this or even experienced anything like this, but you're very welcome. And uh, when Jesus was baptized, it says that people came from Judea and Jerusalem and from the hill country. So you can imagine them all sat along the, the banks of the River Jordan watching what was going on. Well, picture yourself sat on the River Jordan. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sat on the River Jordan, sitting there and watching what's going on. And um, when Jesus was asking John the Baptist to baptize him, uh, John the Baptist said, no, you should be baptizing me. But Jesus said this one thing, no, baptize me so that all righteousness may be fulfilled. Now, righteousness means in right standing. Baptism is about being in right standing with God. It's taking the next action. Now, I don't know of those of you that were here last week when Stephen Matthews came and he spoke about um, long term, uh, the, the, the long run, the ro long race. The long, the long game. <laughs> I've had a cold and I can't hear, so I'm deaf as a post. <laughs> the long game. And then he talked about discipleship. And he's, he talked about four aspects of discipleship. The first one was to listen to Jesus. The second one was to talk to Jesus. The third one was to follow Jesus. And the fourth one was be obedient to Jesus. Now, all of these candidates this morning, they've heard the call of the Holy Spirit. They've heard 
They've heard the voice of Jesus calling them, come home. They've spoken to Jesus by saying, I need you. I can't go on living like this. So they've spoken to him. And he said, come with me and I'll, I'll, I'll show you what your plans are. So they have followed him. And then the last one is obedience. See, when you ask Jesus into your life, is a one-on-one. -on -one. You speak, he listens, and he takes the action. It can just be between you and him. But baptism is different. You take the action of following and being obedient. And these candidates now are going to acknowledge Jesus before you, before their Father in heaven, and before the gates of hell. So these, these, these disciples, trying to avoid using candidates, we're trying to use the word disciples. The disciples are stepping up to the next place of their Christian walk. And this is why. When, when Jesus came up out of the water, it said, that the, uh, a voice from heaven was heard, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. This is what these candidates, sorry, disciples, these disciples can guarantee to hear in their spirit this morning. We may not hear it, but their spirit will identify with that. So, by the way, this is my wife, Hilary. So I'll pass you over to my wife. And this is my husband, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's such a privilege to be up here this morning and um, excited for what's about to happen. And um, it is a privilege to be here with the church family. This is my church family. And I hope that you're all our church family. We're all together. And uh, you will hear this morning that um, there are also new people to the church. In fact, 60 new people came to our, um, our lunch the other week. Two weeks ago, we had a new to church lunch. And it was absolutely amazing what, uh, what went on there. But so anyway, we welcome you all this morning. And it's not just us two standing up here. We've got two guys in the pool. We've got Dave and we've got Dale this morning. And then back a bit further, we've got, um, we've got our helpers. And uh, we've got Lorraine, wherever they are. And we've got Anne. And it's, they're, wet, they're sticking their heads out. So welcome to them as well, because they are amazing. They're amazing guys, and they do, they do such an awesome job. So um, I'm going to leave it over to you now, I Well, think. Let's, uh, let's all enjoy the River Jordan. <laughs> and our first disciple <laughs> is Martin Pierce. clap please and encourage everybody thank you no. <laughs> he can't wait come on over here i thought he was going to dive in then <laughs> right martin and uh, and why do you want to be baptized is this past few years my wife has been through some terrible some terrible things. She had cancer, a heart attack just a few weeks ago. And it's been going on for quite a while, but this past few weeks, I went with, spoke to a neighbor of mine, Lynn, that day, and I asked her if she could teach me how to pray. And every time I've asked Jesus, God, um, to help, he's been there every time. Um, He's really eager, which is... Anyway, the scripture that the Lord has for you, Martin, is Psalm 62, 5 to 7 from the New King James. My soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God.
got a great sound that Paul just read out to you then. Yes. And I believe that, you know, Jesus is going to be all you need him to be. Yes. You know, Pastor Dave was talking about the future. We may not know what the future holds, but guess what? We know who holds our future. Indeed, your future, amen. mate, is safe and secure. Jesus will be all you need him to be. He's your saviour. He's your baptizer this morning. Yes. He's your healer, not just for you, yeah. but for your wife. And he's your deliverer. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's a privilege yeah. and an honor to baptize Amen. you, mate. On the confession of your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ this morning, we gladly, Dave and I, baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well done, mate. Amazing, fantastic. Right, our next disciple is Shane Oba. Oba, I hope that pronounces right. Wonderful to see young people coming up. Absolutely wonderful. Shanae, how old are you? Ten. Shanae is ten. That's wonderful. Now, Shanae, I'm going to ask you this morning, and why do you want to be baptized? Because I love Jesus and I want to follow him forever. Simple as that. That's amazing. Shanae, and uh, that is such a, such a wonderful, wonderful thing to say, and he'll never leave you, never forsake you. Shanae, we've got a verse for you, and it's Proverbs 2, 1 to 5, and it's the New Living um, Version. My son, my, my daughter, I'll say to you, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Okay. Oh, what a beautiful little girl, isn't it? You know, we, we sometimes talk about the children being the, the church of tomorrow, They're the church of today, aren't they? What, it's, a, it's a wonderful privilege and a pleasure to baptize you, Shanae. And you know, you, as you grow and as, as you take the, to, to heart the words of God, you know, the Bible says about letting your light shine. <laughs> you can see a beam in this morning. But it says, let, let your light shine before men so that others, so the men who see your good works will glorify your Father in heaven. And I tell you this, your light, my lovely girl, is going to shine bright. You're going to be obedient to the Lord. And it's not going to be all, oh, look at me. But others are going to look at you and see Jesus through you. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Shanae, on the confession of your faith this morning, Dave and I gladly baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And the next disciple is James Gay. So it's very clear what uh, James has uh, decided. <laughs> There's no doubt there. So James, and why do you want to be baptized? Well, I've, I've always been in a religious person, really. I had a religious upbringing. When I turned 16 and left school, I decided to do it all myself and turn my back on God and try doing it my own way. And um, I was sort of one of those people that still prayed, but if I didn't have an answer to prayer, I'd blame him. 
And if I did get an answer to prayer, it was like, thank you, but I'm still going to go my own way. But in January this year, I gave my life to Jesus. And um, he's just been doing so many things in my life. And I just want to show that I'm as much committed to him as he is to me. Right, the, uh, the scripture for you, James, is Proverbs 4, 10 to 13. Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life may be many. I have taught you in the ways of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let it go. Keep her, for she is your life. said just something that just came to mind and Omid said it actually when you taste God there's no going back is there no. and the Bible says in Psalm 34 taste and see that the Lord is good Amen. you know God doesn't just want you to know you to know that he loves you he wants you to experience that love in a, in a more immeasurable way he wants you to know his goodness you know Pastor Dave and I were talking earlier on about knowing something like in a textbook but actually when you see that thing happen it's, 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 a, it's a totally different thing, isn't it? Mm. And, you know, I was just thinking, if I went to, say, an Indian restaurant and ordered a chicken biryani, right, or, or somebody was in there, sorry, eating, say, a, a biryani, and so he said, this is awesome, this is wonderful, I wouldn't be taking a word for it. I'd be ordering it. I'd be <laughs> diving in. <laughs> and, that's what, and that's what God wants you to do. He doesn't want you just to sit on the sideline. He doesn't want you just to, maybe, you know, you've grown up and you've known about God, but now this is the time where you're going to know him in, a, in an amazing way. And God's got, a, you and, and your, your wife, he's, she's, he's got a great plan for your life. A bla plan, the Bible says, to bless you and prosper you. I know. Uh, James, just a quick one, because James is in my um, connect group. And uh, I just think as dads, we've got such a responsibility. They're a lovely family. Great. Lovely, lovely family. And mate, this isn't just yeah, about you. No, it's about your kids. Yeah, your kids, yeah, kids. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's You're leading as an example. Such a massive radiant. Sorry, sorry. I don't know why they get me up here. Every time they get me up here, I do it. <laughs> Honestly, it's a great example. I, 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 you know, we speak on on our connect groups, and great, you know, Emma and Bonnie, they they don't really realise what they give us great, as a family. Awesome. Great, important. Great, great. So, James, on the confession of your faith, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah, just um, just to say that James's dad, Andrew, is over there, and um, he's been such a blessing to us yeah. because, you know, during lockdown and everything, we had Zoom, we had our connect, and and Andrew was on the other end, and and Andrew, you're amazing, mm. you're an amazing person, and it's a two-way thing, you know, you helped us a lot with what you were going through. So it's lovely to see you this morning and your lovely family. And um, the nec our next um, uh, disciple is Bonnie, James's husband. And they are an awesome family. And um, they've come, you know, every week with their children. I know Bonnie. And is it a year now you've been coming? Since January. Oh, since March. And... Um, and, and they've just got involved. They're just amazing. And Bonnie got involved, and, and James, didn't you, in, in Jesus Cares? And, you know, and, um, and it's just wonderful to see people coming into the church and, and just getting involved and just helping wherever. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a privilege to just to be here and uh, listen to your, your stories. And thank you. Thank you so much for helping, helping me. Um, 
Right, Bonnie. Yeah, sorry. He's just telling me what to do now. <laughs> this is what happens, isn't it? Bonnie, um, I just, um, yeah, why do you want to be baptised? Um, I fully believe that... <laughs> if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here today. And so I want to give my life to Jesus because he gave his to me. And I'm so thankful. And not only has he saved me, but he saved my family also. <laughs> oh, I was really in the deepest, darkest place of my life, and uh, he brought me into the light. And I yeah, want to thank amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, that's amazing. All we've got to do is cry out, isn't it? All we've got to do is cry out and surrender, and just he just steps in every time he steps in. Bonnie, the, uh, the verse of Scripture that we've got uh, today, uh, well, it's Psalm 5, 11 to 12. New King James, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as a shield. said God we can cry to God anytime can we the righteous cry out the Lord at the Bible says the Lord hears them he delivers them from all their trouble yeah we go some, through some things we go through storms but I tell you that this Jesus is with us in those, in those times isn't he mm -hmm. and he's got a great plan for you and James Father just we just thank you for this couple Lord we thank you for their heart and their passion Lord, we thank you that, Lord God, in these days, Lord, you're going to grow them. Yes, Lord, you, the gifts that's in them, Lord, is going to come out of them. Yes. Lord, thank you for the blessing they are for Dave and Sarah yes. and their group, Lord. And yes. I pray in the days, the weeks, the months ahead that, Lord, you grow them, mature yes, them, Lord. and use them, Lord, for your glory. Lord. Let their light shine, Lord. Lord, let their light shine bright. Lord, let them taste and see that you're good. You are good, so good, Lord. So, Sarah... On the confession of your faith in Jesus today, Dave and I, we gladly baptize you in the name of the Father. Bonnie, sorry, not Sarah. So, Bonnie, on the confession of your faith, we gladly baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Lives are being changed today, definitely. It was Bonnie, it's somebody else, isn't it? Oh, is it? I think it's Donna. Oh, it's Donna. Oh, sorry, I have got it wrong. Promptly admit it when you're wrong. Our next um, disciple is Donna Bennett. There she is. Hey, Donna, come on. Right, I think we're baptizing two today. Yeah. <laughs> Donna's having a baby. Oh, blessing, such a blessing. Right, Donna, I'm going to say to you, why do you want to be baptized? Only because I love Jesus and I want to follow the same road as he. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Right, we've got a verse of scripture for you as well, Donna, and it's Isaiah 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will never be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you.
was reading um, one of the Psalms this morning, it just said simply this, it says, when I thought my foot was sleep, slipping, your steadfast love held me up. And you know, I was just sort of thought that picturing our feet can take us sometimes in life where maybe we don't want to go or where we shouldn't have gone. You know, but the wonderful thing is, God's steadfast love has always been with us. You know, I, I can remember, you know, times when, you know, the, the, the phrase like skating on thin ice. I, there's times when I'm sure we've all done it and we're skating on thin ice. But if, if it weren't for the Lord, we would have gone under. You know, we don't even know the times that we were in danger, probably, but God in his mercy and in his grace. And I'm saying this, it's, it's that, to say this really, that, listen, you know, God, God doesn't advocate us going our own way and doing our own thing, but listen, God wants you to know this. When you, his grace and his mercy and his goodness is far, far surpasses any mistakes you've made, any yes. sin you've ever committed. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says, the righteous cry out to the Lord, he is in, doesn't he? And he delivers them. And God has a great plan for your life, a wonderful plan for your life. Just stay close to him. Call on him. Yeah. Call on him and he'll be with you and he'll help you. Just keep keep to his word. Amen. 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 Don, on the confession of your faith in Jesus this morning, we gladly baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Do you know that there, there's just such amazing power in that verse where it said when Jesus was baptized and the, the, the voice from heaven saying, this is my son whom I love who I really love. And, you know, I think we can sense that God's love for these people that have been baptized. See, these people, they're not complying. They're not complying, I ought to do this, I ought to do that, or whatever. They want to. Their heart is crying out to know him more. And that is really the essence of baptism, of a broken heart. And then God can use it, and it, it, it's, it's the greatest gift that he can ask for, a broken and contrite heart. And uh, <clears throat> we've got an elderly gentleman, which is fantastic, uh, Arthur Joseph. Stand here and look at you. All right, there. Wonderful. Okay. Arthur, can you tell us how old you are? Ninety-one. Isn't it wonderful that the age has nothing to do with the relationship with Jesus? So, Arthur. Why do you want to be baptized? Well, the world is so full of lies, full of uh, unclean things and uh, violence, and it's not a safe place. Right. And I got, there's, there's a day, this young chap came up to me and with a Bible, and he said, if you want to change your life, God didn't create all this. He created a beautiful world. And it turned out with the violence of Satan. So I want to try and get there, dedicated to this world. And that's Wonderful. what I've done. Wonderful. <laughs> Arthur, this is the scripture that the Lord has for you. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged but has crossed over from death to life.
I can remember baptizing my nan when she was in her 80s, but Arthur, man, 91. <laughs> That's awesome. Man. Hey, there's no there's no age in the kingdom, is there? <laughs> Amen. Awesome, Arthur. <laughs> and I, you know, I believe that your latter days are going to be far, far greater than yeah. the former. Amen. This is just a start. This is just a start, Arthur, in your walk with Jesus. I tell you, it doesn't just go on in this life, it's in eternity. Awesome. I would like to meet Jesus. And I would like to meet my my mum um, and my dad. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you will one day. In Christ you'll meet them. Yeah. If they know Jesus, you'll meet them, won't you? Wonderful. What a day that will be, amen? Yeah. Yeah. We'll be I can remember Pastor Ray saying we'll be kicking out our feet in the rivers of life thinking, what was all that about? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So Arthur, on the confession of your faith in our Lord Jesus, we gladly baptize you this morning. In the name of the Father, Father. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I think Arthur's going to stay here because his daughter is going to get baptized next. I don't know. Faith? Faith Joseph. <laughs> Just leave your bag there, darling. Yeah, that's fine. Now, your dad, he's done amazing. Yeah. He's done amazing. Mm. And Faith, I'm going to ask you the same as your dad. Why do you want to be baptised? Um, I was brought up in a false religion as Jehovah's Witness, and I was researching the scriptures. And my brother helped me. He showed me certain things on YouTube about 23 minutes in hell. And also, I was looking through the scriptures and from my past, it wasn't adding up. It was contradicting and I was lied to. And once I read the scriptures, what my brother showed me from the New King James, I knew when Jesus revealed it, because before I become a born again Christian, I was sleeping and at the time I was a lot of stress and um, I was crying to Father God and Jesus to help me. I'm searching. Mm. I want to be close to you. I want to worship you the right way. And I was told from my childhood that you don't go to heaven. There's only a limited number, like 144,000. But I know that's for the 12 tribes. But everyone do go who's worshipping <laughs> Jesus. And the vision what I had, I was sitting on Father God's lap in heaven. I can visualize it. I can see what he looks like, even Jesus. Jesus is a spitting image of his father. And I sit on Father God's lap. I, he let me cuddle him and kiss him. I was like a child. And then he said, go over to Father Jesus. I fell at his feet. He picked me up and I said, Jesus, Father Jesus, I don't want to go back. I want to stay here. It's too bad down here. 
And he said, my daughter, you've got to go back. I've got a mission for you. <laughs> and that was to come out of false religion, to be born again, mm. to get to and Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, Faith, when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And he's healed my spine. Absolutely. My stomach had a major operation. Did you? And he's healed me. Well, miracles happen. Yeah. It's only believing in Jesus. He can do it. He's the only way. He's the only way. Great faith. Oh, it's such a, such a, it's so amazing to hear stories like yours and to know what Jesus has done in your life. And you know what? If he can do it for faith, he can do it for you. He can do it for you. Faith, the, the verse of scripture that we have is John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. This is the right decision. That's right. This is Jesus talking to you. Okay, this is in John. Okay. He knows exactly what you're going through. Isn't it great this morning seeing a dad set an example for his child? Isn't that wonderful? You know, I was just thinking there when you talked about, you know, what, what sort of stuff you're into and all the doctrine and all that business. You know, man can lie to you and religion will lie to you. No, I was baptised and I wouldn't have got baptised before. No. Well, listen, God will never lie to you. And he said, the word says, God is not a man that he should lie, not a son of man that he should change his mind. He doesn't speak and then not act. And he doesn't promise the things he's promised to you the Bible says he will fulfill. I just want to be washed clean. You will, you, you, in Jesus' name. So this morning, Donna, on the confession faith. of faith, sorry. Gosh, I'm getting the names wrong this morning. And I got a piece of paper right in front of me. <laughs> faith, sorry, my love. What a great name. I, I wanna live, I've got to live up to it. That's it, isn't it? <laughs> That's it. It's a step of faith today, isn't it? Yeah. It's a step out in faith and you've got baptised in front of people, you know, and you, it's a wonderful witness, isn't it, to Jesus? Yeah. yeah. So faith on the confession of your faith in Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Great. Well done, Phil. Well done, The next person is Cupid Tazivazino. <laughs> <laughs> I think he got that wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, de I'm deaf as well as dumb. <laughs> So, Cupid, and why do you want to be baptized? Um, I come from a Christian background and everything, so the decision was never mine. And today I just want to take the choice to dedicate my life to God. Well, this is the, uh, the scripture for you, Cupid. As Isaiah 11, verse 2 from the New King James Version, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Don't wear those shoes in there. They're too good. I was praying this morning, and, I, and I, this just sort of word came into my heart that, I, that God spoke to me on. 
and uh, a number of weeks ago. And I just felt, as I was seeing you in there, and as you came into the back room there, I just felt God wanted to know this. There's a, there's a verse in Jeremiah that says this. It says, stand at the crossroads and look around. And it says this, it says, ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your soul. And I was just thinking, you know, the crossroads is a metaphor for coming to a point of decision in your life. And, and I don't know, but God knows there may be an area of your life where you've been struggling and you've been wrestling. God wants you not to ask for his way. Ha ask for his way and his path. You know, God's path, path is often the path or the road less traveled. It's not the road often of public opinion. It's not the road of sometimes our friends and our family. It's God's road. And it's a road, I tell you, you walk down this road, but not just, just the, asking for, for the road to walk down, the, the choice you have to make, but start to travel down it. And I tell you this now, right? God wants you to know this. You will find peace and rest for your soul. You will find peace maybe in an area of your life you've been wrestling with, struggling with, battling with for a long time. Just ask him to show you, amen, amen. and be obedient to his word. Amen. 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 Keep it on the confession of your faith in Jesus this morning. We now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well done, Nathan. Well done, Our next disciple this morning is Tracy James. <laughs> Come on, Tracy. <laughs> well done, Tracy. Tracy, have you got family here? You've got your friends here, great. Welcome. You're, you're all my family. I know, but you've got, you've got two police. Got right. There, there, over there. I think he's there. Oh, there they, oh, there they are. are. I know, you can't, and John. you can't see anything up here, <laughs> can you? Right, you go and stand over there next to Paul. Tracy, it's lovely to have uh, have you here and uh, here. yeah, and be in our church family. Um, I know I've known you for a few months now. When did you come to church? Well, Start I, coming? I came back. I came about five five years or so okay. ago for a short time. Okay. And then I come back with Jen. Jenny Jean's yeah. gone. I know there, Jenny. Right yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you. And then you were going to come to Israel. And we had to cancel yeah, that. But then you're coming next year. So that's amazing, isn't it? But listen, why do you want to be baptized, Tracy? Well, um, I'm not sure I've ever, ever been baptized before. But um, now I find I think it's the time for me to pledge my my faith and my commitment to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost, and to follow Jesus as well as I possibly can in his path, because he's given me so, so much. Now it's time for me just to give a little bit back to you, well <laughs> as much as I can. Well done, Tracy. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh dear, I've got to take my glasses off and put them back oh, on I was going to borrow your glasses. Like... Oh, were you? What do you want them for? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, the verse of scripture that we've got is 2 Samuel 22, 17 to 20. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Oh, Isn't that fantastic? Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you both. Thank you. Now God's got a great plan. I was just thinking there's a scripture... Um, in Joshua, I think it's Joshua 9. Paul has already read it out this morning. One of the candidates, or disciples, I should say. And um, God says to be strong and courageous. 
He says, don't be frightened or dismayed. The word dismay means to look around in terror. When you look at stuff that's going on in the world, sometimes it's easy to be um, apprehensive or even, you know, terrified. Praise God we have Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, and he says, he says that he will be with you wherever you go. And that, that word was given to a man called Joshua before they took the promised land, before Israel en- entered into their inheritance. You know, there, was, there were like battles they had to face and giants they had to slay and all that stuff. But you know, the wonderful thing was that as they obeyed God, God went before them and, he, he, and they, they experienced incredible victory. You know, cities, giants that they were in the land, stuff that they had overcome, when they were numbered, and they, and they overcame because God went before them. And I tell you this now, God is going to go before you. So the things in your life that you have to deal with, you're not dealing with them on your own. Because God has gone before you and he'll make a way for you. If he can make a way for, for three million, whatever it is, four million of God's people to walk through a sea, he can make a way for you. Amen. 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 Tracy, on the confession of your faith in Jesus this morning, we gladly baptize you right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We've got such a variety of ages, haven't we? I was, ju- I was just thinking that. This yeah. morning. I mean, Sinead was is 10. Yes. You know, Arthur, 90 plus. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think this is, this is what God is doing. An amazing way, uh, you know, he's just shaking people at all ages, all nationalities, and it's really exciting times that we were in. Yeah. We really are. And uh, this, I'm going to say, this is the last man to be baptized. We've got two young people now. Yeah, but I'm calling him a man, a man because this is what he is destined for. But I think he's probably 12. Am I right on that? Daniel Boyd. Come on up here. <laughs> Can't get up quick enough. You don't need to say anything, do you? You just you just look at this this man. You know, you 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 can tell that he's destined. He is destined for great things. You know? So why do you want to be baptized? Um, I want to be baptized because I want to show everyone that I have to say to give my life to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. He just can't wait to get in the tub. No, just wait. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> this is the scripture for you now, but is also for your future. This, this has got... This has got life living in it for eternity. This isn't a temporary verse. This is, this is being spoken into your spirit. This is Romans 9, 16 to 17 from the NIV. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. He's a smiler, isn't he? (laughs) It's great, isn't it? You know, like Daniel in the Bible, mate, you're going to be a man of integrity. You're going to be a man who will stand up for what's right in a place that's dark, man. And like Paul said, you're called God. God's going to use you in a great way. And it was a, I was just thinking there was a, an older man said to a young man in the Bible, in, a, in the New Testament, about, he said to Timothy, Paul, he said, don't let anybody look down on you because you're young. And the same goes for you, mate. You may be young, you may have a smile on your face, but what's going to come out of your mouth is going gonna, is gonna to touch people's lives. And it's not you who's saying it, it's God in you, isn't it? Yeah. So be, be strong, be bold. 
be courageous because God is going to be with you. Amen. Amen. God's going to do great things for, 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 with you and, and through you, man. Okay? Okay. Daniel, on the confession of your faith in Jesus today, we gladly baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well done, mate. Hey! <laughs> well done, Daniel. Well done, mate. Awesome. And last but not least, we have got Esther. <laughs> Come on, Esther. What a great name, Esther. Shall I take your shoes, darling? You have come for such a time as this. Is that right? In the Bible. Yeah, we've got a daughter called Esther as well, so it's a good name. And she's a smiler as well. <laughs> Don't want to embarrass you. But um, how old are you, Esther? Uh, 14. 14. And Esther's. You come to the youth search, you're in here. Yeah, that's great. Esther, I'm going to ask you, and why do you want to be baptized? Uh, I want to be baptized because I want to show and declare my faith and not be ashamed that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and that he loves me. That's it. That's it. It's, it's just very simple, isn't it? Yeah, just stand on what you believe. Brilliant, Esther. And the verse we've got for you is Proverbs 2, 6, verse 6, 10, and 11. This is the New Life Version. For the Lord gives wisdom, much learning and understanding come from his mouth. For wisdom will come into your heart, and much learning will be pleasing to your soul. Good thinking will keep you safe. Understanding will watch over you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bless you. All right, darling. So, yeah, you've been born for such a time as this, amen? amen. And uh, just stay in his word, study his word. J just from following on from what Hillary and Paul have just been saying there. You know, the Bible says in Joshua 1, 8, do not let this book, do not let God's word depart from your mouth. Meditate on it, think about it, chew it over. And I tell you what, you will experience success and prosperity in your life. Just stay close to him, amen? amen. Esther, on the confession of your faith in Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give him another shout. Round of applause. What an amazing morning. I don't know about you, I didn't want that to end. Absolutely amazing. Didn't Paul and Hillary, Dale and Dave, do a fantastic work this morning? Absolutely amazing. 14 lives proclaiming the goodness of God. 14 lives testifying that Jesus is alive. A living word in a living life. You know, there's a, a verse in the Bible in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, and it says this, anyone, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever calls on his name shall experience his wonderful saving grace. And that's what we've seen. That's what we've heard this morning. We've heard the voice of the whosoever. It never ceases to amaze me how Jesus hears that cry from our heart. How Jesus lovingly responds to the crises in our lives. We've heard testimonies, many testimonies, both young and old, of how Jesus has come into the darkness and brought light, 
into, into crisis and pain and suffering and brought wholeness and peace and comfort. It's what he does. He's our Savior. And maybe you're here today and in these closing moments of this service, we've heard well and good the message, the good news of the gospel proclaimed through these 14 different voices. You've heard it this morning that Jesus is Savior. Jesus has unconditional love and unconditional forgiveness to offer each and every one who would call and cry to Him and place their trust, simple faith in His, in His name. Maybe you're here today and you've come as a visitor and you've listened to maybe one of your relatives talk about their encounter with Jesus, his love, the peace that he gives, the forgiveness that he brings. I tell you, he lift the weight of the world off your shoulders. He'll take it away for good forever. It'll go he doesn't want you to carry that burden. He doesn't want you to carry that pain. He doesn't want you to live in darkness where it seems as if the lights are continually off. No, he'll come in. The light of life will come into your heart and he'll switch the lights on. He'll give you a meaning and a purpose to live life in a brand new way. It's what he does. How he does it, we don't know. But like Martin said right at the beginning, when he asked Lynn, Lynn, I want to learn how to pray. He started just calling on the name of the Lord. And suddenly, into that void of his heart, into that emptiness in his life, the presence and the peace of Jesus came. We could go through testimony after testimony and think about how Jesus came to that moment and met each one individually. He'll meet you where you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how confusing or how dark it might be. The Bible just simply sends out an invitation to you. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. I wonder today, are you ready to make that call? Are you ready to send up that cry and experience this wonderful gift, this free gift of salvation that Jesus wants to give you? I often put it like this. You know, usually every day you need to step into the shower to take a wash on the outside. Because if you don't, your family, your friends around you are going to start complaining after a little while, if you know what I mean. You need a wash. The wonderful thing is about Jesus is he doesn't just wash you on the outside. When you open the door, he washes you on the inside. We've heard from people who have been washed on the inside. It's wonderful. It's it's the most amazing miracle that any human being can experience, and it's free. You just simply have to open up your heart and make the connection with your Creator, and He does the rest. He won't kick down the doors of your home and demand entry. He waits respectfully at the door of your heart. He'll wait there for years He'll, he'll come when you're young, in the prime of your youth, or he'll wait almost to the end point of your life. He will wait patiently, year in, year out. But the Bible says this, today is the day of salvation. You don't have to wait any longer. Your moment has come right now. I'm going to pray a simple prayer. And to help you, Open your heart and ask Jesus into your heart, into your life. You can repeat these words quietly in your heart. You haven't got to say them out loud. Quietly in your heart, you can repeat 
what I'm about to pray, and you can place your faith in Jesus. And I'm telling you now, it's not a magical prayer. It's not a magical prayer, but a miracle will take place as you open your heart to him and put your faith in Jesus. As you call on his name, you'll experience this peace that you've heard about. You'll experience this joy, this excitement, this wonder of forgiveness, this washing, this washing of all of the old for the new to come. Let's close our eyes. We're going to do this before we sing, before we go today. You're ready to ask Jesus to be your Savior. You're ready to ask him to be your Lord. And he's ready. He's been waiting. He's been setting this moment up, anticipating it. And as you pray right now, as you open your heart, a miracle is going to take place. Jesus Christ is going to come to live in your heart. And you're going to know it. You're going to know peace for the first time. Rest, comfort, and his love is going to wash over you. Say this quietly in your heart with me. Say, Jesus, today I call on your name. I want to be saved. Save me from my sin. I believe that you died on the cross for me to take my sin and the punishment that I deserved. I believe you died and you rose again to new life on the third day. I ask you to live in my heart. I place my trust and my faith in you right now for a miracle to take place the miracle of salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer this morning, listen, we would love to give you a free Bible. As you leave today, we'd love to give you a, a little New Testament and also a, a magazine that we produced of testimonies from people from this local church. We'd love to put that in your hand to encourage you. And listen, just keep coming back. You prayed that prayer. I'm telling you, a miracle has begun in your life this morning, and we would love to hear about it. You may be watching online this morning. You prayed that prayer, asking Jesus to come into your heart. A miracle's begun today, and we would love to send you a, a free Bible and a little magazine, just send us an email, and we will send that Bible out. Hasn't it been an amazing morning this morning? I tell you, we have got so much to thank God for as his people. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to sing before we go. And remember, after the service today, if you want prayer, for healing in your body, or you want to stand in for somebody that you know of who's not very well at this time. They need healing in their body. John and myself are going to be here at the front, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to lay hands on you, and we're going to believe that Jesus is going to touch your body. Have a great week, church. Let's lift our voices and sing before we go. God bless you. Sing. There's nothing that God can't do. He witnessed the testimonies of people whose lives have been changed today, and that is our declaration this morning. Just one word, you come the storm that surrounds me. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's 
and transformed us and Lord we pray that this week we will take that power that you have given us and we will share the gospel with other people we will share of your goodness in our lives because there's a lot of people outside of these walls that need to know about you Jesus so Lord we ask that you would use us to be your hands and feet to share your message of love 
to people that you love so much in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Well, we are in November tomorrow. Can you believe it? So, so much we've got going on in church life in, in November. Wanted to let you know youth is on this Friday at 6.30 for everyone who's between the years of um, year 6 and year 13. We'd love to see you in the main hall. Also, this week is a Connect Week. So if you're not in a Connect group, we'd love to get you hooked up. You can check out our website or come and see us and we can help you do that. Then a great thing for you guys, after your walk got rained off, we have organized a curry night as a consolation for you all, which is going to be great. And it is a week Wednesday on the 10th of November and it's completely free of charge. It's at the church. All you need to do is register to let us know that you're coming. You can either do that at the back of the church or online or with the link that I'm going to send you. And also a forward announcement as well for the 19th of November, which is a Friday, just to let you know our next Encounter Israel evening is on on that day at quarter past seven. So pop it in your diary and we'll give you more details. And as we've mentioned over the last number of weeks, we're involved in Operation Christmas Child this year, packing shoeboxes filled with toys to be sent as a declaration of God's love to children across the world that are living in poverty. If you haven't already picked up a box and you'd like to do so, we've got some at the back and Barry is standing to give you those and we'll be collecting them on the, from the 15th to the 22nd of November. So you still got some weeks left to get them packed and wrapped. But that is it for this week. Have a blessed, blessed week and we will see you next Sunday. Take care. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you have any prayer requests, would like to share a testimony or would like to give online, why not head over to our website, kings-church.org.uk. If you prayed the prayer of salvation today and would like us to contact you to help you with your next steps, please click on the Choose Jesus button of our website. Remember, you can stay connected at this time by staying in touch with your Connect and team leaders. If you are part of King's Church and are not yet connected, scroll down to our Connect Online section and we will be sure to get in touch. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to meeting with you again very soon.